these blessed lights of home that are beckoning to us who are here, we are so journeys toward that heavenly home, but meanwhile there are so many that need to be invited. And thank you for giving us the privilege to continue broadcasting the gospel, inviting men and women, boys and girls in this and many other lands to hear these broadcasts. To come while mercy's door is open still. And therefore use this broadcast today to thy glory. For some golden daybreak we shall meet never more to heart. In your wonderful name, Lord Jesus. Amen.
I should then have perished in my affliction. Thank God for the Bible. Thank Him it is an open Bible in thousands of homes and in numerous churches that still believe it is the only sure rule and guide to faith, that it is inspired from Genesis to Revelation, and that it reveals salvation by grace through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Someone has said about the Bible, this book contains the mind of God, the state of man, the way of salvation, the doom of sinners, and the happiness of believers. Its doctrines are holy, its precepts are binding, its histories are true, and its decisions are immutable. Read it to be wise, believe it to be safe, practice it to be holy. It contains light to direct you, food to support you, and comfort to cheer you. It is the traveler's map, the pilgrim's staff, the pilot's compass, the soldier's sword, and the Christian's charter. Christ is grand subject. Our good is designed, and the glory of God is in. It should fill the memory, rule the heart, and guide the feet. Read it slowly, frequently, prayerfully. It is a mine of wealth, a paradise of glory, and a river of pleasure. It is given you in life, will be open up to judgment and be remembered forever. It involves the highest responsibility, rewards the greatest labor, and condemns all who trifle with its holy contents. Whoever wrote this must beyond a doubt have a great love and reverence for the Word of God. It cheers us to find people who thus place the Bible first in their lives. I do want to add a few words to what has already been said about the preciousness of God's Word as well as its importance in the lives of people today. While we thank God that the Bible is the world's bestseller, we are not blind to the fact that the Bible is also the most neglected book in thousands of homes of this land, not to mention other lands. How we would like to see the Bible an open book in every home. Do you thank God that the Bible is the world's bestseller and that it is still considered the world's best gift? But we are not letting this blind our eyes to the fact that the Bible is also the world's most neglected book. Many who own it never read it. Many Bibles are only ornaments in homes, seldom have ever read. They are treated the same way as the rest of the furniture, dusted and put in plates regularly and at the best are nothing more than even idols as far as practical value to the household is concerned. I read in a newspaper some time ago that a minister was arrested for window thinking. He had been creeping up to houses to look into the windows. What his motive was, we were not told. Possibly he had chosen to do a little secret detective work of his own to see what the average family was occupied with during the evening hours. And while I would not endorse this method, I would, honestly, like to be given an opportunity to see a part of what God sees in the average home today. I think we can safely say that there are very few homes where the families are gathered for Bible reading. Of course, it's difficult to even find a complete family circle anymore. Home is to many only a place to eat and sleep. Someone has said home is the place in front of a garage. Well, be that as it may, sad as it is, let me nevertheless ask my listeners this question. What place does the Bible have in your home gathering? The picture that comes to my mind is not a pleasant one. It seems I see the father buried in an easy chair behind the evening newspaper while the rest of the household is emptying the magazine rack, reading the mystery stories. That is, if they haven't forgotten how to read, the TV has made reading obsolete, sadly. If it's an evening when you entertain friends, what then? In homes where there's only religion but no living savior, the most common scene is the card party, I suppose. Some have become bold enough to introduce card parties in church, but it's safe to say that places are not church, and nothing more than community clubs. Or let us look at the issue from another angle. In the course of a conversation, I ask my acquaintance this simple question. Are you saved? What shall I expect for an answer? If you say, you will, without hesitation, say, Yes, thank God, by His grace I am saved. But that answer is not very common. The opposite could as well be expected. Some people do not even know what we mean when we ask this question, Are you saved? Their faces are blank as they ask, Why, uh, what do you mean? And not until we have changed the question to, are you a Christian, 
you will understand somewhat what we're driving at. Now, why shouldn't people understand what we mean by the word saved? Is it the word coined and used in some backwood settlement? No, my friend, it's a scriptural word and goes to prove that people are not reading their Bibles. Otherwise, they'd know. Jesus said, I am come to seek and to save that which is lost. To the sinner of Jesus' house who said, Thy faith hath saved me, go in peace. About our Savior, in a step, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. But as many in jail are questioned, what must I do to be saved? For all that Christ believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And Jesus, who by the further test of the believers, by grace you are to be saved. And I think that God will work from many, many more attitudes for this other saved to you. And people read their Bibles thoughtfully, earnestly, sincerely. Could they be strange to something so vital as this? Do you miss the headlines in your daily newspapers? I guess not. Then why have you missed the headlines in the Bible? I once met a person who said she had never sinned. If she had read the Bible, she would not have made that mistake. But what even worse, she was a stranger to the saving grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, how our people need to get back to their Bibles. Without a scriptural understanding of sin and grace, our age is doomed. They need them to have taken this, in spite of thousands of church fires in our fair land. Sin is not sin to such as refuse to find out what the Bible says about sin. It's called by other names until lying becomes just a joke. Swearing is jesting. Divorce becomes comedy. Immorality, new morality. With the animal nature pleasing itself in the lust of the flesh and recognized by even some false educators as beneficial. If the Bible were permitted to speak on these subjects, the devil would be bitterly defeated in his modern program for this godless age. But the Bible is not only neglected, it is in some states outlawed from our public schools. What a shame. David says in Psalm 119, The entrance of thy word giveth light, it giveth understanding to the simple. Oh, how we need a sweeping revival. May this wonderful word of life gain entrance again into many hearts, homes, churches, and schools before it's too late. Advance through the Bible, I saw as a slogan of a Bible school one time, and I said, Amen. There is no advancing without the Bible, only the downward plunge toward hell and total destruction. But with God's word in your heart, you can go marching onward upward, down for heaven and God. We need to pray as never before that the gospel for every creature may find its way into millions of homes and hearts as soon as possible. For evidently our working days are not many. Jesus is coming up soon. Lord, let us meet today and then look at the need of the Bible. Grant that those that are depending more on the words of man than die and receive that it is fruitless and full of fault and eternal destruction. And grant that they will look to be the Lamb of God, reading thy word prayerfully, find the real salvation made plain.